All right. Well, um, you know, just to get started, um, quarterback wise, uh, Heinrich has a pretty good ankle sprain, so um, we'll see if he can do anything tomorrow. Uh, Chuba came out of the game a little bit banged up. You know, hasn't played much, so he's a little bit banged up from uh, you know getting hit. Um, Jeff healthy, so we'll go through the week and um, probably probably come all the way up to game time in terms of uh, you know who will play. So obviously each guy brings a little bit something different to the table. So we'll have you know sort of a pretty diverse plan and um, you know see who, see who's able to go. But I won't be able to comment on Heinrich till after I see him tomorrow if if he can do anything at all. Um, you know, with regards to this week, obviously we're really excited to have a chance to go to Madison, Wisconsin, um, an iconic place, a place that I played, I played at as a player, and uh, you know, Coach Fickle does a great job. Um, this season, year one, both teams at five and five, you know, trying to obviously get a win this week on national TV. Great, great opportunity for our guys. Really, really, really uh, excited for our guys. Um, you know, I've, I've tried to be honest with you guys every week about how I really feel about the tape. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I thought defensively, and I thought uh, many players on offense, that was by far our best game. I thought our offensive line, it was by far the best game on offense. And so um, I was proud of the guys, and I told them that. Um, well, you know, we never, never accept losing, obviously. But um, you know, to me, uh, the process that we're trying to put in place um, is working for a lot of guys. And so the lessons for our team is, you know, hey, you're probably not going to have five turnovers and win very many games, especially in the Big Ten. But to have five turnovers and lose by three is uh, is says a lot, <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, just to have that game be close versus a talented Maryland team. Um, you know, we want to have fourth quarter shutouts. You know, we, we we can't give them the ball at the 25 yard line no matter how they got it and have a penalty and have a missed assignment that leads to a field goal. So uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. But I was proud of the guys and I'm excited to take them out there this week. They continue to fight each and every week, and more importantly, they get better. And so I'm I'm proud of where we're headed and. Uh, with that, I'll see all the questions you guys have. What, what do you think the, the largest issue is with your quarterback play? What can you fix in the next two weeks? Yeah, you know, um, I think, uh, I think um, there's been several issues throughout the year. And so, um, you know, anytime you're, you know, anytime that you're have this, you know, the number one is turnovers, right? I mean, like we have three three point games. I think in those three point games, I think we have 12 turnovers in those three point games. Check me if I'm wrong. I think 11 of them come out of the quarterback position. So to me, um, you know, to turn the ball over, right? Um, at the same time, a lot of those games were close because, you know, Heinrich made great runs or, you know, Jeff made some great runs against Minnesota. So a lot of good things happened from those guys. You know, I'm one of those, I'm one of those coaches that, you know, I don't love to make like big, you know, everything to me is very incremental. Like, hey, it was this here, it was this here. Um, but certainly, I, I would be a fool not to sit here and tell you it's, it's, um, it's um, uh, protecting the football. In, in the passing game, I think, um, you know, um, obviously the first interception, I'll still feel like, I'll still feel like, you know, uh, the one, one with Jeff, excuse me, you know, he, Malachi gets tackled and we're running the double move. But I'd love to see our quarterbacks, you know, uh, as I talk to them, just be a little bit more intentional about, you know, we, we, we can't keep throwing uh, balls up. And we can't, we can't just throw balls up to a spot thinking the guy's going to be there. Like, at the end of the day, you have to be intentional at quarterback. Like, you, every ball you throw is a ball you want to throw. And, uh, you know, we had twice where guys threw interceptions kind of backing up and letting it rip. And, and that's just that's not who we are. That's not who we should be. And so, um, you know, there's always a yin and yang to it, obviously. Like, they're young players. I'm trying to guide them through it. We're trying to guide them through it at the same time, having expectations and standards for the way that we want to play. So what can be fixed in the next two weeks? I certainly think, Sam, that, um, you know, we, we fixed kind of like the, the pocket ball security. Like, you know, you go back two games ago, um, not the pocket, you know, running the ball. Heinrich had two fumbles, you know, and so we've, we've certainly worked on that. We've certainly worked on the way we hold the football. Um, this was interceptions this week. And, um, you know, so... What can we do? Um, we, we just keep coaching. And I, I know that sounds trite, you know, maybe, but like we just keep coaching, we just keep pushing, we just keep grinding, we just keep working. Um, and uh, hope, that, uh, hope that it just continues to come to fruition, um, build on the good things, and try to eliminate the bad things. How do you get these guys to not think about it, though? I mean, 22 turnovers by the quarterbacks has got to be a mental side to it, too, now with those guys every time they're out there with the ball in their hands. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think the thing that you always try to get guys to do, and again, I, I, I show them lots of different things. You know, I talk a lot about basketball, and I talk about a lot about like uh, last week we showed them Kobe talking about as a rookie, you know, shooting five air balls in the in the uh, finals game seven, and then coming back the next you know next year and 
making those shots. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, when you're a basketball player, when you're Michael Jordan, when you're LeBron James, when you're, I'm not, like, uh, that's about the end, end of my extent of who's a great basketball player nowadays, but you don't go to take the last shot and think about how you're going to shoot. Like, you just shoot the way you shot a, a thousand times. And to me, that's trusting your training. And that's really our process. Our process is, is practicing so much and working so much that we can trust our training. And so um, as you get late in the Big Ten year and you go through the Big Ten for the first time and, you know, uh, you start to experience these teams and things that they're doing, um, you know, um, trusting the training that we're going to have, whether it's a read, whether it's a decision. So you look at two of the interceptions, two of them are backing up and just kind of throwing it. Another one's just, you know, throwing it, you know, to a spot, hoping that it's going to be completed. And uh, those, those, those things just can't happen. And but but in terms of for the players, my job is to help them become great players. Um, it's not, hey, don't throw interceptions. It's, is this what you're trained to do? Like, is you know, like you've worked your whole life to get to this point. Like, what should you do in this moment? Like, hey, it's not there. I should reverse out. I should go make a play. Like, we want our guys to play free. And so, um, you know, I'm not giving you great answers other than just to me, it's always about trusting your training going, you know, Chubba comes down at the end, you know, Chubba's, Chubba ran the scout cards last week, you know, Chubba's, you know, that's just part of, hey, putting your third quarter back in. But I have a lot of confidence in Chubba. And if you go back and ask, you go back to every answer you guys have ever asked me about him, I believe in the kid. I believe in Chubba, and he's kind of healthy now, and you saw him running. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you, you put him out there. He hasn't had a ton of reps. He'll get some reps more this week if he has to play. I'm sure he'll be ready to play. So I think it's that. I think it's trusting your training. I think it's time. I think it's time on task. You know, um, a lot of these guys haven't played a ton of football. You know, Jeff has, but Chubba hasn't played a ton. You, you think back, and like, I went to sat down with him yesterday. We, we kind of just kind of kicked it for a little bit and talked. And it was like, well, I played two games in 2020. I played a couple games in 2021. I started two games last year. I played a half. I think, I think a quarterback, you got to play. You know, I think you have to play and play and play and get comfortable, get in a rhythm. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things. I always start with myself. What am I not doing right? Um, I'm the head coach. Everything that happens here, I'm responsible for. You know, you look at that game, um, a lot of things are the same thing over and over again. Like we're getting, we don't really get beat, but we do get beat on double moves in the secondary, right? So we sit there and you, you look at the teams, that, you look at a team and you're like, well, they don't do this. Everyone, I mean, we're kind of a good defense. So we're going to get the same couple things. And so uh, just challenging our staff, but really challenging myself, like what are the things that needs to be fixed? Um, I have not, I have not solved this issue in terms of the turnovers. And so I don't go in there and say, guys, we've got 22 turnovers. We've got to fix it. Like, they know that. I just say, hey, are we trusting our training? Is this the ball that you wanted thrown? Is, was this intentional or was this just sort of like, oh, I don't know what to do? And if it is, just continue to give them those opportunities, those reps, and, and continue to work. That's, that's as honest an answer as I can really give you because I don't have the answer, if that makes sense. I'm working through it. But I believe in these guys. I want to make that very clear. I believe in these guys. I'm not one of those coaches who's like, man, we just need to get a – no, these guys can play. They just, have to, they just have to continue to work and grind through this. And on the other end of it, like to give you an example, I showed them the punt fake in the game, okay? And then I showed them the first time we practiced it and practiced the Tuesday before Michigan. And literally, Borgature and Snodgrass run into each other because each, each guy's thing – because we checked that play, right? And I showed them in the game versus a look we've never practiced. And there's one extra guy there, Marco Ortiz. No one ever talks about the long snapper, man. He makes an unbelievable block. And Bullock and Ty Han and Elijah Judy, who's really, wants to, I think, wants to be a tight end, makes an unbelievable block. And Snodgrass comes around and picks up the extra guy. And I guess my point to them was, guys, I hate to say this, but everything takes time. And you have to just keep working. What sometimes happens at quarterback is because it's so visible, the weight of being the starting quarterback in Nebraska can sometimes weigh on you so much, you start searching for answers. And there are no answers. you got to just go back to work every week. It's this incremental, like, one better approach. And so um, I hope that we play really well this week. Um, I hope that we solve the problem this week. But the only way to solve it is just to keep getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. I'll say one more thing, and this is going very long, so I please forgive me, okay? But... I showed our coaching staff a cut up, and these are my friends. Ryan Day is a friend of mine. Justin Fry, the only coach at Ohio State, is a friend of mine. But you know, you asked me, Sam. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, you asked me a question a couple weeks ago about the reverse at Michigan State. Why we got eight yards? They ran the exact same play. Ohio State ran the exact same play, and they made one more block than we made. And Marvis Harrison came around for a 22-yard touchdown. We ran a Y sail route in the boundary. They ran the exact. They ran about 12 of the same type of concepts because we all have the same plays. And so my message to the coaching staff was. It's not the plays. <laughs> it's not the application. I mean, you always, always want to call back here and there. It's the players and their confidence level and their execution level. And it's not, it's not like, hey, players, you got to make it right. It's actually just continuing to watch these guys grow. Like, look at Javen Wright. 
Look at what Reps is doing for him. This is a guy that was like, you know, hey, should I even come back this year? You know, am I a corner? Am I a safety? What am I now? He's out there ripping balls out. So it'll all come together for the quarterbacks. We just love for it to happen right now. You must have mentioned uh, throwing your spot and hoping the guys are there. Um, on on Chubb's interception, um, what, would, what needs to happen there? Yeah. What did happen and what needs to happen? Yeah, so. So first of all, let me say this. I, I take responsibility for that. Okay, I take responsibility for that. Um, it's a it's a good play call. That so the play is very simply. It's it's a play that every team in the world runs. It's it's three man routes. It's double under with a corner route, right? And so basically, versus man, the two guys run the under routes. They chase the under routes. You have a one on one corner. It's incomplete or you know. So um, you know they zero blitz. It's ninety protection. There's a gap protection. Fedoni stays in. You know he's not going to get hit. And it's just a confluence of events, right? It's, you know, it's, 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 we take a long time coming out of it by number one. So a lot of people, I think, thought we were trying to throw the ball to number one. And because it looks like the ball's going to number one, it's Billy flattens that rat out because the guy kind of undercuts him. And, you know, really, we'd love to just see Chubb put that ball in the back corner and those guys get out of the way a little quicker. So it just wasn't quite executed exactly right. Um, which, you know, again, when it comes down to execution, it falls on me. And, um, you know, their kid, their, their kid made two unbelievable plays. I mean, that corner made on a double move to beat the safety. He ran back and picked the ball off. And on that play, he's playing the guy man and comes off of it and picks off the inside. So when you look at the tape, it looks really, really bad. Let me, let me just say that it looks really, really bad. And I get that. And I'm not sitting here saying that for the players, you know, the play clock was running down on us. Things were going fast. I think originally they wanted to run, you know, Sat wanted to run a pick play by one, two, and three. Um, and, uh, you know, um, we, we got, we, we kind of, Got to see what they're in because I didn't want to put Chubb in a bad position where all of a sudden it goes to zone. He, he's had no reps in any of these plays this week. And, um, you know, that play happened. So I wouldn't put that on Chubb. I wouldn't put that on anybody but me. But um, that is what that play is. It's, you know, we call it, it's, it's Indy. It's old Peyton Manning, right? Two unders with a corner out. First man, you throw the corner out. They just kind of got too close together. So that's, uh, that's one of those ones I, I wake up at 2 in the morning thinking about, you know, like, hey, that's on me. What's the, what's the Sims picture look like in Um, I would say that we don't, we don't, we, we just in general, because I don't want to start talking about one guy and make, you know, I, I would just say we don't, we don't throw these interceptions like this in practice the way we do in, in games, you know, and um, again, you know, sometimes I think when you run the ball a lot, when you finally have a chance to throw, you know, you're, you know, maybe a little, you know, you have, you're not kind of maybe as in rhythm. And so, um, you know, we certainly came out wanting to throw the ball a little bit more last game because we knew how they would play. And of course, you throw the, you throw the early, inter, you know, we, we, we hit, hit him with a man beater um, and we overthrow um, Emmett. That's going to be a big play. The one they threw the penalty on Billy, then pulled it off. And then we have Fedoni on the over. If you, if you see that play, Billy's running down the middle of the field wide open. So there's just a lot of things, a lot of different pictures for the guys. It's not, it's not, it's not a super complex offense. It's just you know, a lot of different pictures that guys are not maybe seeing. But yeah, we certainly don't have those interceptions in practice the way we do in the games. I think. Sometimes in the games, it's just a little bit of, like I said, like there's a little bit of pressure on our face. We're not sure where to go, and we kind of back up and throw it. And I don't, I just don't want ever want a quarterback to not throw the ball intentionally. You know, I'd rather our quarterbacks s reverse out and go scramble and make a play. We got dynamic quarterbacks who can run. And if you're playing man coverage against us, man, our quarterback should be running for 200 yards against them. So, um, but again, th those things aren't happening. You always go back, you look at practice. What can we do better? Um, and that's we'll continue to do that this week. Yeah, we're. I'm not gonna. Everything falls on me. Like we're not gonna start being like who, who's this, who's that. Like I'm, no one's gonna divisive, become divisive with us. Like everything falls on me. You know, it's just you know to be on a headset. The ball's at the five yard line to try to run guys into the game. The clock was winding really fast that game. <laughs> um, you know, you're you're up against it. You have a new quarterback. You got to get in the huddle, get out. You know. I'm, um, the last thing, you know, all these things are kind of talked about ahead of time. So if it's wrong, it's on me. Just let's just leave it at that. Like, it's just way easier that way. Um, you know, I have a say on everything. You know, we don't run a fake punt without me doing it. We don't, you know, I don't sit there and want to micromanage every play. But if it's a big play, we're going to do it. I also, like, can I be honest with you guys? Like, I just kind of want our guys to play. Like, I mean, like, how are we going to be able to build a championship team if everything's like to not make a mistake? Like, yeah, like, so, yeah, like if I could go back, would I have run the ball there? Yeah, then we kick a field goal, then they have the ball, they go down the field. Like, we're also trying to play, and I want these guys to learn how to win. And so, when I talk about process and all these things, I really mean it. Like, 
I mean, you turn turn a Saturday, turn a game on on Saturdays, right? And like, you know, after we get home, those teams are scoring forty five. But they, they play, and they have some interceptions here, and they play. Like, I want our guys to play. We want it to be smart. Did we practice it? Did we rep it? We just didn't quite execute it one hundred percent at the level we want. You know, we put our third quarterback in, and I say third quarterback only out of risk because of the reps. Put him in a tough position. All that falls on me. It doesn't fall on anybody else but me. So, um, I, I take all that on with a grain of salt. But if I just, if I also just, and I believe this, if we just sit here and we just keep everything like really simple and just, we're never going to win at a high level. We're just going to learn to just be. So we're trying to be competitive, man. Like on defense, like Tony's at his best when he's bringing heat, and we're going zero blitzes, and every once in a while we get beat, and you know, we just got to play like. You know, you know how, how you know how I feel in my chest when we call the fake punt. I'm like, oh my gosh, is this going to work? But we got to we got to go play and let the guys give the guys a chance. So, um, but everything falls on me, and I mean that with the greatest. But you know, sometimes I walk up there like, hey, they're going to ask you this. Like everything falls on me, hundred percent. And um, I would just say that I believe that um, our guys are going to get better and better. And uh, I wish we would have won that game on Saturday. Have you ever been around a program where the players are kind of tentative about making mistakes that maybe disappoint the fan base? Uh, I think all I think all players until they're until they, they until they kill the bear they're all they're all nervous about playing well like they're a young player and eventually eventually they 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 kill that they kill that thing in their mind and they go play you know I mean I'm you know I I, I read them like the if you if you ever read the book Haga Curry you know it says like you know if the samurai you know, if if you want to live you have to die you know like you have to be you have to be dead to all those things to to, to live and so um, you know. Uh, Again, we don't want to be – there's a big difference between making mistakes and doing things outside of your training. Does that make sense? Like, like um, I tell our players, like, I, after the game, I had one of our really good players who, who no one's noticing right now made a play that hurt us. He texted me. He's like, I'm so sorry. I said, don't ever send me that stuff. Like, as long as you prepare and you get to the game and, you, and you're not selfish and you make it about your team and you go play hard, man, this is a game of – this is a game of mistakes. Things happen. Like, so we don't want to play in fear. And um, – you know, it's really hard at first for players to play for me because they hear me saying all the time, do things right, don't beat ourselves, execute. And at the same time, they also hear me like, be free, go play, and they can't get it. But when you become a good player, you get it, right? Like, you want to take the last shot. You want you want the ball in your hands. You want to – I mean, Chubba, the shame of that thing was Chubba took us 90-some yards, right, to go win that game, and we're about that far away. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's just kind of in general. Our, care, our players care greatly. They desperately, desperately want to win. They desperately want to win for our fan, our fan base, for themselves, for the state, and um, you know that, that's all I can ask for. When people are you know, critical of Marcus Sacks, what, what do you want them, fans or us or anyone, to to consider when they when they put it on in specifically? Oh, that, as a quarterback coach and as a quarterback. Yeah, I, I think I think they I think that's part. Of, the fans should do that. I have no problem with that. Fans can be, should be critical of me. Fans should be critical of Sat. Fans should be critical. Like, you come to the game and you sit there and you're like, okay. And, and for me to start, you know, oh, we got this many guys. That's not. That's not who I am, right? I do think we've. I do think. I think. Okay. And I would say well, even within the coaching community, when people play us and they talk to us afterwards, I think in year one with as many injuries as we've had and different things that have happened, like, like you know. We've never made an excuse. We've always showed up each week, and we battle, and we're in every game, and we have a chance to be in every game. I think our guys are fighting their tails off. And, um, you know, I never talk about changing a culture, but I do believe in instilling a culture. When you want to instill a mindset and a culture and a process, I think all of that's happening. And I think if people can't feel that, then I – but if you say to yourself, like, hey, are we – is this heading in the right direction? And, you know, so, um, I mean, I got a true freshman Jalen Lloyd catching balls behind his hip, you know, like – it's just, it's just, it's just going to continue to get better and better and better. So, um, the answer in life sometimes is always just to change everything, right? Players want to transfer. Everybody wants their, their, everybody wants their coach, their head coach to fire everybody. Like, has that, has that worked out here? Where's that worked out? We're just firing assistant coaches and coaches and coordinators. So we want the co we want the whole offense to start over again with a whole new language next year. Like, I'm not doing that. It's ridiculous. So. We're gonna we're gonna just be exactly who I said we we're gonna be. We're gonna be a day by day organization that gets better and better and better. We're gonna get through year one, okay? Most of our guys on offense are coming back. We'll get better and better and better. And then, you know, like you some of you guys that you're on the field before the game you usually see me walking around the field. And a lot of times I walk with players. A lot of times I walk with hurt players, right? And I'm walking with like Ramir and Deshaun, and I'm like, Hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe Irvin. Just imagine you at 240 pounds coming down the stretch here in November next year, like. So, uh, um, you know, Marcus is, Marcus is fighting and scratching and punching and willing 
to get this thing as good as we can get it. Um, that's what all the guys are doing. And, um, you know, I'm proud. I just couldn't tell you how proud I am of guys. Like Malcolm Hartsock didn't practice last week. And all of a sudden, he's got to go from playing. And then he comes in and practices on Friday a little bit, right? And then he's got to go from safety to corner. So he goes out in the game, and they hit him on a big play, right? And, man, like, like he's fighting for the team. What do we do? We go yell at him? Like, so, yes, fans should absolutely. Like, I'm not here saying that. I'm just saying for me, when it comes to me, I prefer to take all the heat for everything that happens because this is everything that happens here is, is runs by me. And, yeah, we five turnovers falls just on the same page. It falls dead on my face. Like, I can't. Just trust me if you guys know. I don't sleep very much to begin with. I, I lay in bed at night like five turnovers. Like, what are we talking about, Matt? But the answer is, what's the answer? The answer is just to just keep getting a little bit better as best I can and and uh, hope that this week we put it all together. You know, this season's been a bit of a roller coaster in terms of you lose the first two, then you win two, you know, blow out loss, you rattle off three in a row, and now you know, losing two again. How have you seen the locker room kind of handle the, the ups and downs of this season? I think they've just really grown. Um, you know, Mich take the Michigan game out of it, right? Because obviously that got away from us, and we talked a lot about that. We went out there on Sunday and practiced. But, like, you know, as I watch a lot of scores in the Big Ten West, as I watch the people, like, you know, some there's these wild shifts of, like, hey, team wins two, and then they lose by 21. Like, our guys are in every game. We battle in every game. Um, I'm proud of the guys, the way they work. Um, we've, had, we've had injuries, and other guys have stepped up and been ready to go. Guys change positions on the fly. It's like Ty Robinson said to me, you know, I said to him yesterday, hey, are you, you know, you, you going to have the team ready to go? He's like, coach, he's like, one thing about Nebraskans, he's like, and I, he's obviously from Arizona. He's like, I don't care if you're from somewhere else. When you're here, he's like, you, 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 just, you just keep going back to work and you just keep fighting. He's like, that's the one thing you learn when you're here. He said, the guys who can't figure that out, they got to go. Um, and they've gone in the past. He's like, but, but, but we'll, be, we'll be ready to go. And so, um, you know. I, uh, I think they've just grown and they've 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 handled it really well and they've they've gotten to a point where um, I know each week I, I now know each week when we go to the game like our guys are gonna be ready to go they're gonna go fight I couldn't say that early on you know I couldn't say that week one week two is still very emotional right now they're just be and, and so the way I look at things is is you know the seeds of championships are built um, are, are sown now right and so that might sound corny to people I get all that right but like I mean, they hit a long run on the last drive, and we blitzed from the left, and the D-line slanted into the blitz. They went the wrong way. That's why that play hit. And, you know, um, you look about, two, two, you know, Cam Lenhart's a freshman. Imagine when he's a senior and he's out there. And if it's not him, imagine Ethan Nation. Imagine those guys when they're seniors, like the lessons they're learning this year when they're preaching to those guys. It's just that, I, as I've said a hundred times, I want to win for the guys that are out there right now. And I want Reimer to go out on top. I want those guys to go out on top. But I don't worry about them. They are competitors and they're winners. And when I first got here, they were very much like, well, I mean, it's hard to win if the offense turns the ball. And now they're kind of like, hey, let's control what we can control. And what we've seen is I think, you know, I think we've seen some really good defensive football as a result because they have a pretty good mindset. And so as that melds over to the offense, eventually that, 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 that way of playing offense, defense, special team all coming together, I think we'll have a pretty good team. I think he's done a great job. I think Justin's done a great job. Um, you know, he's uh, he's really a center by trade. You know, and so to go over and play guard, that's a whole challenge. You know, you're facing all these three, four teams, bare teams, the guys right up on top of you. I thought Justin's been awesome. I think Teddy Prohaska's really, really hit his stride. You know, last game because Nuri, you know, we got Ben Scott playing on a hurt MCL. You got Nuri has surgery. They say four weeks. He comes back in a, in a week and a half, and he's practicing. I'm so grateful for those guys. Ben Hart does a great job for us. And then Lutoski rotated in, you know, every two series last game. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with that group and how hard they've worked uh, to come back. You know, the tight ends, Linda Meyer is an unsung hero on this team. You know, he just does all the dirty work. Borkature played his best game, got hurt, and came back in and played on a sprained ankle. So um, I think, you know, the, the, when, I, when I look at the overall offensive picture and scoring 10 points, having five turnovers, obviously I'm not a fool. I'm disappointed when I look at the tape. I'm like, man, we're getting better. We're getting better. We're getting better. And just encouraging the guys to continue to do it. And um, um, I think Donnie does a great job in that room. And I think the players uh, take tremendous accountability to uh, do their job at a high level. Right. Josh, 
No, I just got banged up from being in the game. Like, I hadn't been hit in a while. So, he, you know, I, I called him yesterday and was like, hey, stop by my office. And he's like, I'm in treatment. <laughs> so, he, you know, I, I obviously for him to go in there and, and then, you know, for for that, you know, for that game to end the way it did, I just wanted to make sure I talked to him. And I always worry about the things I say in the press conference. I know, Sam, you asked me after the game, like, why would you throw it on first down? And I, I, mean, I was kind of caught because, like, we didn't throw it. But then I remembered he, he pulled it and threw it, you know. So I just wanted to make sure he knew that, you know, when those things happen, yeah, there's some accountability to him to know that play. Like, that play is a base play day one. It's a handoff. But also for me, like, that means I, that we haven't done a good enough job of getting him enough reps. So I just want to make sure we we're on the same page. But he, um, yeah, he's fine. I mean, he's fine. He's just, you know, like I said, sore from getting hit at quarterback. I, I did want to ask him about the, the first interception of the game. Was that just a predetermined green? Yes. Like yeah, well, that, so that's, that's four verticals. And um, for us, you know, we have different versions of it. You know, a lot of times we'll say, Hey, number three, is, you know, Fedoni is a really good matchup for us in man. So if it's man, you know, hey, we're going to work Fedoni. It's kind of like the man beater, right? Kind of the way we did it um, in the NFL. Like, hey, number three is, is a good man beater for us. It played out like man, though it really kind of wasn't. It was it was free. It was kind of like a, a zone quarters that looked like man. So if uh, if we were to recognize that the ball would have gone to Billy and he ran through, also if it's man, the post player should be in the middle. Post player jumped it. But at the end of the day, if you you know go to the end zone copy, Fedoni's still open. And um, again, you know, just kind of pressure in his face. You know, uh, Heinrich uh, kind of steps backwards. You know, the thing I talk about Heinrich all the time is, is because people talk talk a lot about Heinrich's slow release, but really all it is is the fact that the ball goes below his elbow as he brings it back. And there's a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL who do that, and they always they always struggle. A lot of them struggle in the NFL with the ability to be accurate because you know you kind of have this whipping motion. I've talked to you guys about it before. So his feet always have to be right. So on that play. You know, he doesn't step and throw because he has some pressure, kind of wings it, and the ball is overthrown and, and uh, intercepted. So, obviously, you have a, a big play possibility down the field to number two. Um, you, you have the man beater, which is open, and, uh, you know, we got to throw, you know, we got to throw and catch it. So, when you talk to me, you, know, you talk about, you know, like, hey, Coach Satterfield or any of the coaches, you know, I look at it like it's going to be really hard to run the ball into free safety pressures the entire game. We're going to have to be able to throw the football. And, you know, we called a play where guys were open. I expect our guys to go make the plays. Um, when they don't, I don't sit there and say, hey, you guys aren't good enough. I say, hey, we're not doing enough. We've got to keep practicing. So that's kind of the yin and the yang of the way my brain works, taking accountability, but also giving the players a chance to make a play. Um, but that, that, I, mean, I, think, I, think when I, I think I think when I said, hey, number two is running on the field, you, you nodded your head, I think. So I think you saw. So I think you guys, you know, it, it's, it's, there's some things that are there. So. Was that Knight Rider? What was that? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's that, that's why I, I just would say like, I hope over the years what you guys will see for me is that like I don't ever want to just take like a short, quick, easy answer. Like I was, you know, like there's always all these different layers to everything, and I try to unpack them for myself and for everybody so that, you know, like hey, if if all of a sudden that ball is two inches to the right because we stepped and thrown, it's a, it's a completion. If the ball's red right down the middle of the field, it's a touch. But you know, at the end of the day, um, it just takes reps because you practice against one thing, you get to the game, they have coaches too, they do different things, and you want players who are seasoned, who can, who can in a running offense, throw the ball versus all the looks they get, and it just takes time. And, but that was kind of the thought process with that play. In 1944, Harvard gets in sack to the boxes. Is there a relationship to that? I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, 20, 20 former guys, Elijah Robinson, um, is in a, in a big spot. <coughs> Yeah, I, I didn't know that till Keith mentioned it to me on the way up. I was fired up. Like that's like that's like he's like my blood. I love uh, Elijah. Um, he, um, I hired Elijah at Temple as to be the D line coach. He was player development at Penn State, and then got put on the field for a little bit. I did not know Elijah. Uh, Fran Brown, who's the DB coach at Georgia. Uh, recommended them to me. We hired uh, his nickname is Rafi, so I keep wanting to call him Rafi, but I want to help him get the job, so I'm gonna call him Elijah. But you can't you can't talk about someone who's better with people. Uh, an elite recruiter, tremendous man, great D line coach. It was with me at Temple, went with me to to Baylor, um, and then he just got you know he got too expensive. I couldn't keep him. He's he's a real co he's had opportunity after opportunity. He's really loved A and M and wanted to stay there, and I'm, I think it's a great choice for them. Uh, for the interim coach. I hope he gets consideration to be the head coach because uh, people all in college football know who he is. You know, sometimes there's those names, you know, he, um, 
I've tried to hire him back. People have tried to hire him back. People have called me trying to convince him to come be their D coordinator. He's just a he's just an awesome, awesome, awesome person. And you know, I don't really have a coaching tree. I haven't won enough games to have a coaching tree, but it's pretty cool for me to say like, you know, there's two coaches in Texas that were on my staff, both both he and Joey McGuire. Um, I think Elijah will do a great job. The players will play for him. His situation kind of shines light on what's happening in college football. This, you know, starting this weekend, you've seen several moves made. It's a crazy time. It was a crazy time like one year ago here. It, it, it's wild to think back of what, what was going on you know, a couple of weeks before you came in. Have, have, do you, at any point, have you and your wife, family reflected on that and what that what that month in November was, was like for you as you now have? I don't think, honestly, I don't think we have much time to do that. That's not like, uh, you know, my, my wife's, you know, Vivi's in volleyball and softball and Leona's, you know, we're kind of all around, but I just know we're grateful uh, to Trev and the opportunity to be here and grateful to be part of the community. Um, it's been so good for our family. Um, with the only caveat being that my son's not here, you know, my son's still being in Charlotte's miserable, but um, it's been, uh, it's been really cool, you know, and, and uh, I, you know, I bring Leona in on Sundays and I walked out yesterday and uh, there's like, there's like, you know, she's eight. There's, there's posters all over the facility that she had drawn and taped up. And it was like, what did it say, Susan? It said, it says, it says poem, it says poem. And she says, uh, if, if people doubt how far you can go, keep going so that you can't hear them. <laughs> I'm like, where did she learn that? But she's putting them up for the players. She's kind of been adopted, but you know, so this has been awesome. Um, when it comes to the coaching carousel, you know, you know, obviously I'm very sensitive to that because I was, while well, I was hired last year, I was also fired last year. I sometimes get sad at the vitriol uh, when I see like I see like coaches getting yelled at and screamed at. You know, it's like we're all. I mean, I can promise you, there's not a coach in America right now that's not trying hard to win. I, you know, so like why why people why people are so uh, hurtful? I mean, what's what happens? What's going to happen is going to happen. Like, you know, but to be uh, to to be like that is is you know I I, I don't understand, but. With all that being said, this is competitive. This is a life we've chosen. This world to me is always, is always like the mafia. Like, you know, you, you, you get hired, eventually you get whacked and you know, you, you live as much as you can in between. So, but um, you know, for me, um, there's, you know, I've got friends in coaching that are, you know, get jobs or don't get jobs. And, and um, I always think about the families, you know, we, we have coaches on our staff that I think would be great head coaches. And um, one, of the, one of the sad things for me in my career is that like, not many of my guys have gotten head coaching opportunities. And I just feel like the way we do things, the attention to detail, the way we care about our players, the way we recruit um, would be really good for a lot of places. It really saddens me always that the two places I was at followed up with an outside hire. And I, I love those ADs. I just always wanted it to be one of my guys. So to see Joey doing well at Texas Tech like warms my soul. To see Elijah get that opportunity, man, warms my soul because there's two types of college football coaches. There's those who believe the players are there for them, and there's those who believe that they're there for the players. And Elijah knows he's there for the players, and Joey knows that he's there for the players, and that's what we, we believe here. So um, hopefully everyone hires the right people. I want to ask about Wisconsin. What, what jumps out at you? What do they do well? I know they've been struggling lately, but what do they do well? Well, they're a, they're a really good football team with really good players, big, physical, raw, athletic, explosive. Luke Fickle's an excellent football coach. Um, I don't know him great, but I know him well enough. Um, we never really crossed paths in the, I had left the American, but we've become friendly over time. Tanner Mordecai, you know, I was probably his first offer. He was right down the street at, at uh, Midway High School in Texas. He lived in the same, like two developments over from me. And I was the head coach at Baylor. I could never convince him to come play for us. Josh Martin, who's on our staff, was with him at SMU. Tanner's a winner. You know, he's a, th think about what we're talking about at quarterback. They have a, is a six year, he's a six year quarterback. You think about how much football he's played. So, um, I, you know, I'm familiar with Coach Longo's system because I was, you know, the draft process with Sam Howe, with all the running backs, with all the wideouts, so just watching that offense, how, how dynamic and explosive it can be. Um, being at me today, seeing Braylon, how big he is at, at running back, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a heck of a game, you know, up in Madison. Uh, I went there one time as a player, um, and never been there as a coach, you know, cold, national TV. Jump around, unbelievable experience. Coach Alvarez, it should be awesome, and so um, I'm, I'm excited about it. But they're they're an excellent football team, and um, uh, it'll be a, it'll probably be a lot like these other games. Man, we'll come down the fourth quarter. We'll try to make one more play uh, than them. They'll try to make one more play than us, and then we'll you know, we'll see who does it. Yeah, honestly, I don't. You know, I honestly don't think about any of those things. Um, you know, maybe 
maybe once I'm here, like let's say like after we go through this year, I'll always address like the previous year's games, but like none of that, you know, before I, I wasn't here, so it's hard for me to address those things. You know, I, I can tell when I talk to our players, you know, there's certain games, you know, they've played against year after year, where sometimes, you know, you, you play Maryland, it's the third time playing them. Um, but, you know, I, I think with us, just think about all the conversations we've had so far today, all the issues we have, uh, good and bad, are all to do with us and to do with the way that we play. So that's really how I try to spend my time. Um, but I do think it's great. I mean, this is a iconic place, in college football. It's an iconic opportunity to be on NBC, you know, um, is NBC right? I that? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I, again, I don't really care too much about those things. Other than I care about how we play, but I just do think it is a cool opportunity, and I'd love to see our guys go play well, and uh, we'll, we'll work our way to get ourselves there. I, I just have a question, a little bit different off of football, a little bit, but it has to be football, but, you know, Nebraska fans have been known for even cheering or applauding the opponents as they leave the field. There was an incident, apparently, this last game during halftime where a Husker fan spit on a Maryland player. I mean, how disappointed are you? Uh, I would hate to comment. That's the first I've ever heard of that. So I'd hate to comment on that till, without knowing what would happen. I mean, my experience with uh, Nebraska fans and, and, and Husker fans has been unbelievable. You know, like my my wife walks home after the games. You know, like she doesn't she doesn't even drive. She's well, I mean, Hus you know, I know everyone wants to win, but all the Husker fans I think have been amazing. The way we are on the road, uh, story after story, people have told me about coming here and the experiences that they've had. So. Um, I unfortunately don't know anything about that, and I certainly would hate that that was true. But uh, but I would say you know I haven't met <laughs> I haven't met but any but, but but great people since I've been here, and um, I'm just glad to be part of the community. All right, y'all.